back to the Team Nerd Herd podcast for our best advice. If you want to do it right, you want to do it right. We're rolling deep for Sunday night. What the uh, fuck is wrong with your mic? My, my mic? Now it's good. Yeah, I hear a background, like, hissing sound. It's, it's, it's not like that, I swear. It's good now. All right. Woo, okay. Perfect. Take two. Sunday night. We're, well, this is the beauty about live, guys. You know, there's things that happen. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. It is Sunday night. We're ready for top picks of the week, man. We're rolling deep with my brother Copy 801. We're rolling deep with my brother Comics King Brando is in the building. Want to thank you guys for rolling with us. Much, much love. Always big, big station right at you, back at you, Brandon. And station to the PCP Army, Bad Batch, Backlot, Rose, and everybody else in the community. All right. With that being said, man, I think we're going to go ahead and get this roll call going. We'll go ahead and get everybody checked in. We're going to go ahead and holler at the brothers out there in the audience, and then we're going to go ahead and take a stage dive out to the community, man, and let's hear that herd chat. What's going on, brother? JR, I know it's Sunday. I know you love football, <laughs> so you're happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy the Niners lost. My team lost, which is not good. But uh, put Rob up top where you're at real quick, Steve. Oh, you got a little like a progression here. <laughs> Okay, of the yeah. three bald men. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> we all got goatees. We all got bald. Yeah, oh, I'm going to spend the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had. I saw that. I was like, damn. Oh, uh, man. I got to go to JR now. Space. What the hell? <laughs> so now I'm going to pass it on down to the sexiest man on the show. Uh, Alonzo, what's Let up, sir? Oh. Ooh, sexy. Ooh, I, I like it. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look at the rest <laughs> of us on the show. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I was going to ask You know, I mean, uh, like, everybody on this side looks so. fantastic, except for, well, I guess I guess copy now, but, you know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, tonight's show. I mean, we have uh, – Poppy and Brandon here, and I'm super excited because it's been a while. Seriously, oh, it's been a minute since we've had Brandon on the show, super and I, you know what? I'm I'm going to enjoy tonight. Uh, what about you, Steve? Oh man, it is good for a Sunday, man. Oh, dude, your boy, your boy was sore today, dude, from Comic Con, LA Comic Con, and just walking around, man. He he needed that walk like nobody's business, but now we're back to it, man. Just took the time to relax, you know, and I'm happy to have. Our brother's here rolling with us for the top picks of the week. And I'm going to go ahead and pitch this up right up to copy 801. Oh, okay. What, what's going on, my brother? Good to see you. Yeah, good to be back. You know, I mean, like, let's face it. You guys are amazing. You know, been an early amazing. supporter. And uh, always appreciate whenever the invite crosses my way. And, uh, again, good to see Brandon, too. It's been about, like, my goodness, maybe, like, I don't even know, <laughs> a month and a half? Yeah, man. Uh, it's been since Baltimore at the house, so it's been, it's been a few months. Um, all in November, I haven't seen you copy. I mean, I've seen you on, on, like, YouTube and Instagram, but I haven't, like, talked to you. So it's good to see everyone again. It's been a minute since I've seen JR again in, like, another month. Um, <laughs> <but yeah. laughs> love, love being on this show. I'm really excited to be here and talking comic books on this Sunday night. Right. Are you pointing at your chewy box up there, copy? Oh. Pointing at you. Oh, Unless you want to get inside. He's, 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 <laughs> he's like, you. Yeah, wasn't sure if. Uh, you want to go uh, inside the chewy box, Jay? No. Never know what you're going to find. You'll cut little holes in it. But oh, <laughs> I'm doing fine. I've been looking forward to this. Miss, you know, not having a show last week. So this is, you know, it's great, you know, just being here on a Sunday night, talking comics, hanging out with you guys. You know, so. We all is good in the neighborhood. Oh yeah. And uh how you doing, Rob? Uh you know, just watching the Chiefs game here. Uh it was a long day today, man. It was, today was uh put up the Christmas tree day, put up all the lights, uh the ornaments, shit. Uh I got my bags and boards in. I haven't had bags and boards for like almost two months, I think. You're uh, like bags, you're the second uh, person I heard that 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 said that. Yeah, yeah. dude. I, I had to sit there and bag and board and tape like 80, 90 books. Got I'm going to do really quick. I'm going to do a shameless plug. So yeah. there's a warehouse about half an hour away from me, and it's called Top Flips. I did a post really? about them like a month ago. They have bags and they have boards and like top loaders and stuff in stock. They've had them in stock the, during this whole shortage. So if anybody needs any, just go online, go to topflips.com. They'll be able to take care of you. Tell them copy sent you. 
<laughs> What's funny go. is that I got these. Copy and Chewy. I got like 300 of these, the Ulti Pro, and I ordered directly from Ulti Pro. Yeah, like all the places during that the, you... And it was during the shortage, you know, so yeah. I don't know. Like the, the companies that have a warehouse, they'll have this stuff, but yeah. if you're getting it from a third party, they yeah, probably they won't. Have. Okay, yeah, but right. I'm also particular. I, I actually order uh, the ones I, I'm like the only person that I know order these bags and boards is Big Fudge. This is the name of the bags and boards. Okay. So so I I, I have to I had to wait like two months for those bags and boards. So I was Big like, Fudge. Yeah. What? yeah, that does not sound like a candy bar choice I want. <laughs> <laughs> Something you're not telling us, Rob? <laughs> no, it's what's what you like, maybe, right? But um, <laughs> no, I just I, I'm just particular with my bags oh, yeah, and no, boards. No, no, I don't definitely. want I don't. I don't want the Ultra Pro, whatever the basic ones. I big fudge is like a cheap version of Mylar. Right, it's basically what it is. So just, yeah, got, just get bagged and boarded up, man. Just bag, just, bag and board yeah, it up. I'm just rambling at this point. Let's move it on back, Steve. All right, man. Thank you very much, Big Rob. Good to see all y'all, man. I'm happy when we get the chance to just chill on a Sunday night and hit them top picks. But let's go in and holler at the brothers, man. Let's go in and here holler at that faction. That four horsemen faction, man. I love this shit, man. Let's go ahead and get a shout out to brother number one, brother Rudy, the Rick Falea, Luchador, Libra, Wrestling, brother of them all. What's going on to brother number two? Something wrong. The executive producer, as Inja Binja calls him, or his name's been dubbed on that other end. Dare I say it? Twin brother to Cyclops, man. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> we got Deanime, etc. Deanime, etc. Call him happy. Call him happy. Oh, Call Havoc. Happy. Oh, dude. Havoc. No, Havoc. Yeah. Havoc. <laughs> and my brother number four, Horror Hermano, Glenn 2K12. What's going on, man? Just live and direct 4K quality. All right. Then you got the music, those luscious beats, man. That DJ Abomination, goodness. And then you got Plain Clothes D up north, dude, just killing the game. And then we're going to go ahead and go ahead and stage dive off this, you know, because you can't swan dive like if you're going to a concert, right, JR? You know, you had your fair share of concerts, my brother. So you know what's going down. You got Raging Cajun Comics, man. If you miss Raging Cajun over on Instagram, over at the Blame Fable Show with Big Hearn, with my man Missing Link, then go ahead and catch you that rewind, man. They went over Jingle all the way. I love what they're doing over there. Brando, oh, man. Cool. Brando, you was in there, too. I saw you rocking and rolling, right? I wasn't on the show. I was on the shows last week. Um, okay. Yeah, I, rem I remember you were on last week, but I was thinking you were in the chat today. I was and I wasn't. I was popping in and out. I was at my grandma's last night at Hanukkah. My Steelers were playing. There was a lot going on. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. How about them Steelers? Oh, dang. You got <laughs> yeah, Big Rob up in the building. Yeah, man. You got There he is right there. Oh, brother yeah. Rudy, brother number one. Brother Rudy, you got my man CRG. Comics are great. Is in the building and he's here with us. Live and direct. And oh. I know, shout out to my girl, Inja Binja. Inja the beheader. Binja with her katana blade sharp if you'd missed her instagram man she's she's been doing a little <laughs> instagram reels man go ahead and support your girl she got a copy oh, box yeah. man check right out, there man check out her uh, her ig lives yeah you got masterpiece making tim stacy is in the building what's going on oh, my brother good to see you look at that inja binja shouting out boom jr wait hold on i'm highlighting jr bam shout out to steve oh but rudy rudy they're just showing mad love over here at the herd you got copy 801, man, just out there, dude, too, just doing his thing, schmoozing it. You know, Glenn, Glenn 2K12. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. You got Uncanny Swag is in the building. Swaggy. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Good to see you. All right. I feel a little parched, guys. No, I think we're – oh, no good. No good. Yeah, ask him about the Steelers. Yeah. Oh, don't uh, you know he's hey. he's all maybe don't mention it right now. Uh, I'm not go. I'm not going to mention. I'm not going to mention. It. But you're sporting it, bro. So that's all. I mean, you can't blame him. I mean, I'm this hoodie's really, really comfortable. Sure, so. it's, it's all good. Justin's used to losing to teams on the show. Oh lord, this team lost oh, the Raiders too. Just like just like mine. Okay, <laughs> all right, and yeah. with that. I think we are all cut up, guys. Alonzo, are you ready to pull up the decaroonie and hit these top picks of the week? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Oh, Al Alonzo, you're coming in a little faded background, brother. Oh, is that better? 
Yeah, nope. yeah. yeah. We gotta get we we gotta, we gotta hear that angelic voice of yours, bro. We can't oh, yeah. can't miss out on that. You know, you know what I mean? You're still faded, bro. You're still really Dude, low. You gotta you gotta raise the volume. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. The difficulties. It's it. The volume's all the way up. Yeah, it's good. Uh, we there you go. Barely hear you. Yeah, you gotta hold dig on, that mic, on. Eric. The Phoenix. What's going on, man? Hold what's on, my brother. All right. Is that better? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh cool. there's there that sexy go. Celine Dion yeah. voice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh dude. It's like music to my ears, guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Like okay. Like a, thank like thank you guys for for humoring me. I appreciate it. Um. All right, guys. Um. So top picks for the for new comic book day. Here we go. Uh. Anthony, what do you got for us? All right. So uh, this week, for some reason, I couldn't. I didn't feel anything as far as picking a, a story. So I decided to just pick two covers. My first one is uh, Devil's Reign, number one, the Scotty Young cover. Um, Scotty Young, you know, is always known for doing the first issue covers. And uh, to me, this one is red hot. You know, I mean, it's all red, and you have uh, Electra doing her uh, Lady Daredevil pose upside down. Good to see you, brother. You know, so it's, and I'm a pretty big uh, Scotty Young fan. I like most of his stuff. Uh, like this it. one, this one uh, has me really excited. Plus, I'm yeah. looking forward to the storyline. It's dope. Yeah, yep, for, love sure, brother, for sure. That's not, you know. Okay. And then you have another cover, too, don't you? Yes, I do. Man, well, this is that? Aliens number 18 uh, from Unknown mm. Comics and drawn by Oops. David Nakayama. So we have uh, Madeline Pryor sporting, sporting her Goblin Queen look and another color bleed by David Nakayama. He's been rock and rolling uh, this entire year, you know. And know. Some great covers, you know. We all love the, the Wonder Woman black and gold that he uh, he put out last week. So, yeah, um, it looks familiar, man. It's like we love David Akiyama, but it's like the same thing going to every fem- X Men female, right? right? It's just, yeah, no, a, he's done. He's done a lot of the, the X Men uh, covers for unknown comics, uh, and not not all of them have been good, you know. But this one uh, with the black just to me, it just pops, especially with the fire coming out of her hands. The pose is similar to the Polaris one, though. Yeah. But it is, but the a, it is, is one something. of the better ones. Yes. I mean, because he, he also came out with one with uh, Destiny and Blue, and it just, it, it that one didn't work. <laughs> Not for so, me, anyway. So what's the odds again, 9.8 on this one? Ooh, rough. Rough, yeah. Uh, and, and what are you talking about? Destiny's not sexy? You don't think she Destiny is supposed to be like a middle aged to older woman, and they he made it look old. like she's in her 20s. Okay, you know, oh, I like Mills, <laughs> <laughs> she's oh, more of a man. gilf. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, man. Oh. Let's take it up another level, shall we? Wow. Oh, Why not? Man. I was gonna say elf, but you know, Alvara, oh, Alvara is a gilf. You know, that's nice, too. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Anthony. I appreciate it. All right. And then, uh, Steve, what do you got? All right, man. I got The Devil's Tree written by Keith Ramel and art done by Wolfgang uh, Schwant. I hope uh, it is not wrong that I butchered his name. But that B cover is Samir <laughs> Samo. And for me, this is a pick. It's uh, I think it's a smaller uh, comic company. It's just putting this out, but it is the devil's tree. It is a ruthless serial killer that brought his victims to this ancient oak tree. And the torment um, that has uh, happened to them has kind of leaked in this tree. And it's just a small story, man. It's based on a true story, actually. And that, I think that's what jumped out at me. And the fact that it's horror, man. I mean, it, it, I want to like see the type of writers that could really take this genre to a different direction. I mean, we're, we got a lot of great you know, like horror titles that have came in the last year, and I'm just a fan of them, so I just want to see what the next level is, and this just caught my eye, so I just thought I'd, you know, give it a shot for sure. Hey, that uh, right right cover is rough, man, because I could see people with that kind of history in their background seeing that cover, and they're like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jarrell, Jarrell, what's cracking? What's cracking? 
Yeah, dude. Uh, but it, it, it's a horror, you know, title that I just want to pick up. No. That's all. Yeah, I get it. But so no, it's, it's just rough. nightmares. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's rough. That, I mean, let's see what's on the inside, right? I mean, that that might be the torment that that is Devil Tree number one. So let's pick that up, man. And then the next one is for my cover pick of the week is uh, Well Be for Two Moons, man. I just like the usage of colors. Yeah. Uh, everything mm. con- contributed in right in the center. It looks like a collage, man. And just the uses of colors are vivid, man. I love it. And I'm down for this, dude. And Two Moons is another, you know, image uh, horror title as well. You know, like, so right. I haven't caught up to it, but I need to, I need to kind of go back and pick one of these Sundays, dude, where I'm just chilling and just binge it. Has anybody read this title? I read the first volume of it, but I think I'm going to yeah. collect it in trade. Okay. Simply Because, like, I liked it. It was just that those kind of books, to me, read more cohesively in a trade collected format. For sure. Yeah. That's okay. an interesting picture of the artist or the writer. Yeah, man, right? Yeah. Artist, he looks like he's artist. Really... Dude, yeah, so the, the artist, yeah. That's kind of creepy. He's yeah. getting his uh, un- Undertaker on, bro. That's that's what that looks <laughs> I, like. I don't know. It reminds uh-huh. me of David Bowie in some for some reason. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, oh, oh yeah. He kind of looks like Jeff Hardy. No man, that video yeah, uh-huh, from Aha uh-huh, from the eighties, yeah. man. Yeah, the old totally. Yeah, video. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about her head, man. That her face and her hair, it's kind of whack. But the rest, I like. It, it's kind of weird, Al. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it dude, totally looks like Weird Al, right? <laughs> like all the or glasses and a, yeah, glasses and a mustache or Gallagher possibly. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> all right. All right, but that's it for me, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. No, thank and then you. guess what? Our guest, Mister Copy Eight Hundred One, has a pick of the week. What is going on? Tell us about this. You buy books, Copy? Wow. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Current books. Who the fuck? A DC so, book. Of course, it's a DC book. Come on. <laughs> What do you think this is? So, yeah, hit him with the copy. all right. So we got Dark Knights of Steel, issue number two. This is a maxi series being put on by the man, the myth, and the legend Tom Taylor. So, any of you might know about Tom Taylor? Does deceased ring a bell? You know. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. These the Dark Ages. That's a good he story. did a little bit of work. Oh yeah, yeah. Tom Taylor. Fantastic. He also did a, a lot of stuff for um, Injustice yes. as well. He did yeah. Injustice Year Zero with the JSA. Another fantastic story. So pretty much Tom Taylor, his whole thing behind this was is he he's a very big fan of history and he loves the Middle Ages. So he's like, you know what? What if the DC characters were in the Middle Ages? That is this story. It's a brand new universe, brand new stories. All the good DC characters that everyone's familiar with are kind of like the the script is flipped on them. They're a little bit different. No spoilers if you didn't read issue one, but if you if you didn't read issue one, read it. And if you did, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So he's on the writing, and then we have Yasmin Putri on the art, and her art style fits perfectly with the way this story is organized and told and one thing that's not on here is because this is kind of like a fantasy middle ages type book you have the one in 25 covers are D D character sheets of each of the main characters so the first one was superman ironically the second one that's coming out this wednesday has not been released however issue three it's going to be wonder woman so you have all of that. The big three. You have all of that to think about. And on the cover here, you know, you get Superman. You have Superman. You have Constantine <coughs> on the bottom left. You have Black Lightning on the top left. And you have uh, Green Lantern. And you have Green Arrow on the very bottom. And on the top right, you have... Uh, Kal-El's mother. Isn't that oh, Batman okay. with Green Arrow? Huh? Isn't that, that Batman with... Is that Batman? Batman? Yeah, I can't Batman really tell from the screen. It might be... Yeah. yeah that's you know what? Correction. It is Batman. I thought it was Green Lantern at first because we did get a little bit of a tease. But yeah, that's uh, that's Bruce Wayne Batman over there. 
But we also have uh, so one thing is uh, Superman's parents are alive in this, mm -hmm. so they didn't die on Krypton. So that's his mother on the top right. That is that is not Supergirl. That's what I thought it was so, going to be Supergirl. Doesn't the name of this book sound like a romance novel? Hey, Dark Knights <laughs> of Steel. Yes. Uh, yeah. Where, where's yeah, Fabio, like, bro? One of, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Jr., you just took it in a direction I just wasn't intending on thinking. I mean, <laughs> also, now also, did Marvel read it. do this like ten years ago called sixteen oh two? Yeah, they did. They pres oh. Same thing. Kind yeah, of. but just like Marvel, you know, DC did a better zombie story, so they're probably going to do a better hey, movie story. We don't talk don't about Marvel zombies. zombies. <laughs> Ever. Let alone the second one. <laughs> so Tom Taylor's all about what if, huh? He's been doing the yeah, Tom show. Taylor's been... Well, Tom, Tom Taylor's Taylor really good when it comes to alternate universe stuff. He lo he loves yeah. doing the regular stuff, but stuff like this, this is his niche. Yeah, exactly. He's just really good at it. Right, here's the thing about Tom Taylor, is look at some of the stories that he's written in continuity that have suffered just because you have to put certain characters in certain roles. With the exception of Nightwing, of course, because that's still kind of a, a ticket wherever in his Superman. But his past projects in continuity are not nearly as strong just because a lot of the concepts Tom Taylor does with a lot of these high-powered characters, it wouldn't fly in a past editorial in a canon book. So you can never see him writing, for example, the main Batman story. I would never see that happening from Tom Taylor. Mm -hmm. It depends yeah. on what the... It depends on the direction... That the story that of the story and where it wants to go some stuff yeah i'll completely agree with that but like the way he's doing nightwing who's to say that he can't do that for another character well, okay, and who's to say he doesn't nightwing want to? copy nightwing has been such an editorially driven character basically didio's whole tenure with dc comics all those side characters were because didio simply hated them he said it in multiple interviews that's why nightwing got shot in the head that's why Wally West oh, yeah. through hell for a few years because the deal thinks that well he's right is those side characters age your classic characters so you get rid of them guess what you you have all the age limits but um, what they're doing right now is they need to get that fan base back for Nightwing that has always been there that they haven't had in a while so oh they're doing Tom damage Taylor, control of course so if Tom mm -hmm. Taylor has a concept he's a proven right they're just gonna say go. We need more of that, but you're not going to find that in the Batman booth, in the Batman office that's driven. Now, what, Tom King had to redo his contract because it's Scott Snyder's not writing for DC anymore, and Tomasi's on his way out. Not Tomasi. Tynan's go, leaving, yeah. too, because that bad office is so editorially toxic. I mean, Tom that's... I I do that. Don't get me wrong. I completely agree, but it's just some people are good at doing damage control, and just some people aren't. I think right now Tom Taylor is in his little niche with doing damage control for Nightwing. But at the same time, like you mentioned with the Dio, the Dio's idea was also to do um, what the hell was it? It became Future Generation State Five. Five G. Yeah, yeah, Five well, G. His thing was to do Five G. So he hated all these side characters that wanted to basically shit on the uh, legacy characters and then he's like you know what let's screw the legacy characters let's do something completely different so he i think he was doing that just to do exactly what you said he realized that he kind of screwed some of the some of the next generation characters and he wanted to kind of make up for it but it was too late well he kind of wanted to start from scratch he's like these are your legacy heroes and then these are all new characters that are right on deck, right? That was a ve we saw something very similar when Batwing was a thing in the New Fifty Two, right? That character yeah. just never went anywhere, so it just got cat. You don't see, uh, you don't see him anymore, right? I no. can't tell you the last time I've seen Batwing, um, but mm -hmm. no one will remember that. Um, and that was a great story written written by Jimmy Pamiotti. Um And then the deal, what Five G really really was supposed to be was we're gonna lock in these characters such as batman's going to be older right so you're going to get more of like a dkr uh batman so that um tim fox can be the batman right his idea didn't really involve having characters like wally who was going to eventually be with the mobius chair so then barry allen's your legacy character who's next well you're either going to use bart or you're going to create a new character 
or um, Jesse Quick, right? So he has more options now in that sense. Is it right, wrong? We'll never know. But there are still pages from 5G that were already made. That's why you have your books like Superman and the Authority. They just so had to rewrite the, the narrative a little bit. No, oh, yeah, the, of course. But he the, realized the reason why he was doing that, I think, is because he realized that he was wrong with what maybe. he did to all these next generation characters. Because if he didn't, if he didn't create stories the way he did with people like Wally West, with people like Nightwing, Roy Harper, then it would have been a more seamless transition. But instead, it was like, hey, you know what? This is too damaged now. Now we have to come up with something completely different because what I what was done didn't really work. Right. And it then was they like what to... happened when it was like exactly what happened when New Fifty Two transitioned over to Rebirth. People were just so, so people were they, New Fifty Two was good at first because it was nice, it was fresh, it was new. But then they just kept there were so many different problems that arose, and then there were okay. more problems. Well, the continuity. So, so Brandon, if, I think if this you, is going to be a great discussion yeah. for your show, Crisis on Infinite yeah. Grants. I think you and yeah. Happy need yeah. to get together for something like this. Well, yeah, I was going to say, this is a premiere of our new segment that we're going to call <laughs> Copy Talks DC. <laughs> with special guest Brandon. That's right. Copy, I will to convince people later. that DC actually is worth the shit. Yep, yeah. I mean, well, yes, well. So, I kind of agree with Robin. This, I'm really, yeah. JR, JR, this is a this is your moment. Job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, right, anyways, right. so, so did, we'll, we'll save it for your guys' yeah. show. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> we're, we're, we're have another pick of the week or cover of the week. That was good. That was that, good. Right that here, was right great here. dialogue for sure. Bro. But here we go. Oh. Uh, Brandon, you have your also pick of the week. Let oh. us know Wait, what's going on here. Hell yeah! So, um, I just read Dare. I just read the recent Daredevil issue today. Um, no getting spoilers. ready for the show tomorrow. No spoilers at all whatsoever, but I'm super stoked for this event. I know I've uh, spoken to JR about what we think will happen. I know JR is very fond he of dies. that um, the Kingpin is, well, Wilson Fisk isn't going to be there anymore. Well, that's yet to be seen. I'm excited um, because this feels a lot like the Bendis run. It feels a lot like the Miller run, but everything's just elevated. We're yeah. seeing Chichetto back on art, which is always a plus. Yes. And Zdarsky has a great uh -huh. idea of who Daredevil is and how far he can take Daredevil's um, views on a lot of uh, on a lot of uh, positions that Matt Murdock is on the other side of the coin of. So it's like it's really which cool. Which Daredevil are we talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was gonna say which Daredevil are we talking about? We're talking about Zdarsky's right now. No, 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 the character. Because remember, there's Murdock, two. not Electra. Murdoch. Murdo oh, not I'm talking about just. Matt Murdock. Right. I'm talking about Matt Murdock because Look, you think that you think that Matt Murdock's going to stay on uh, for you know for I know for now, but you think yeah. that Electra will? Yeah. Um, yeah. So Sudarshan so stated that he has more Daredevil to write. There are definitely a lot more missing pieces that I don't think will will um, be picked up in Devil's Reign, like the whole arc with uh, Bullseye, and there can only be one person who really survives. I think Bullseye is going to be back. Um, oh yeah. And then. Of course. Um, so I don't think that's going to be in Devil's Reign. Again, Electra has her own mini series, So they might just relaunch with the whole number one after all. That's just called Daredevils if they really want to do that. I think Ooh. this is going to be very similar to the format of Jason Aaron's Thor. I'm really excited for this. And it's not every day your favorite hero gets an event like this. That's Daredevil. Yeah. Dude, yeah that that, that, that B cover is sick. That B cover yeah. movie cover. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Sick, bro. Brandon. I'm sorry? Yeah. JR has been preaching that uh, Kingpin's going to die in this series. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I think I don't know. I don't think he'll. If you kill Kingpin, you got to have somebody up next, and I don't think that they have anyone with that they caliber. Do. Who's who? Would you say JR? I think Butch would be taking over. His son. Yeah, but gonna, Butch doesn't have elevate. the depth. No, Butch doesn't no. have the depth. Kingpin but, does. I'm, well, my, my thing is this with, with Butch being stepping up is we never really got a Kingpin coming up the ranks story. We always got Kingpin was the top dog and this is how he did it. I think what they're going to do is Butch is going to basically the Kingpin's either going to be killed or taken out of the picture. He can't yeah. be mayor of New York anymore. And I think Butch is going to right. take over that role and give us how he becomes the Kingpin. 
in that story that we never got. I could basically, I could see that happening. I don't know if you're going to remove Kingpin yet. I don't know. That's a little difficult for me to answer because if you take him away from the book, obviously, like, there'll be that big gap in Daredevil's legacy. It's like, where does he go from here? Because who's given him the height of his story? Kingpin. Since the Bronze Age, right? So if you take him out, it's like, to me, it's like, what other mountains does Daredevil have to climb? You know? That, that that's like my only thing. But if you keep Kingpin in there, he's just going to keep coming back and keep coming back. And then they're going to have that like endless relationship where it's like, no matter what they do, they're just going to see each other again well, in five years. Well, I do think we'll eventually get Wilson Fisk will come back someday. Characters never die completely in comics. Nope. I would say, I if just King- think that he's going to be taken out of the picture for a while, if not dead for a little while. I can, I, I can see that. Um, It's weird. It's really weird. Just based off like the history that you have for each other. Yeah. I have a question and a comment. Uh, to me, this almost feels like what was similar when Norman Osborn took over as like head of I mean, head of uh, Shield. Like, remember that he took he over, took over he Hammer, the Dark Avengers, and yeah. So, because I think that Wilson Fisk eventually is going to de- create his own not team but network to fight against the heroes he sort of did um but, he, but he's gonna do it even more so Ultra, I think. During, right. the, during um good to see you brother he created his version of the thunderbolt or or during was um what was that uh where the whole city was covered not in darkness um uh, yeah what was the venom storyline just came out king uh king, king black. black king of black there was a mini series that was called Thunderbolts during that, and Kingpin right. created his own Thunderbolts team. But right. he's, except that he, I think he's gonna have a, a. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a, a, a much wider network. But in any case, might, and my yeah. question is: Do you think that? Um, because obviously they played around with Elektra taking over as Daredevil. Now, do you think that there's room for her being called Lady Daredevil? I hope Brandon. not. That's a horrible name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. No, I mean, but. Zdarsky is such an intelligent writer. He won't do anything that's stupid. Okay. But, all right. So, it's a lady daredevil, but just her taking over for maybe two years, three years. Well, it's always been a temporary solution. Even when Jane Foster took over as Thor, her name wasn't Lady Thor. Right. Um, it was Thor. Well, that was still a temporary solution to establish another character's arc. You know, we've seen countless times where Matt, where Daredevil switches from solely being Daredevil and solely being Matt Murdock, right? Right. Um, several times. And, and kind of the weird thing about Daredevil's history is a lot of stories are really similar, but they're also spun in a different way. I would say the most different Daredevil run is Mark Wade, simply because that was the only time I've ever seen Matt Daredevil smile or anything like that. But that's a fucking horrible <laughs> run. I enjoyed horrible. it. I enjoyed it. It was weird. It was You're sadistic. Weird, but- I'm sadistic. I'm sorry. That's come from me. Which just makes me question myself even more. But it's like, if someone's <laughs> as sadistic as me calls me sadistic, what does that say about both of us? But um, that was such a horrible run. But, Nerds. Okay. I don't know. No, this, di- this is the dialogue we need, guys. Let's get it. <laughs> I, I personally don't think Electra is going to keep the title of oh, Daredevil. Oh, bro, this comic stage. Because she's too she well known of a character because, as like, Electra been, herself. She's been like the mainstay Daredevil for going on a year now, I yes. would say. So that's that's why I, that's, that was that's why you know I was wondering if she would eventually. You know, seventy three. Like Fisk is gonna take over. Well, because you know, like like you mentioned, well, how so. Jane Foster became well. Thor. You know, she was Thor for about maybe what four years, and personally I don't think... speaking, that that run was like a breath of fresh air, and brought new life to the title. And I was hoping that they would have kept the run even longer. Right. I mean, we'll see. I don't really I like think, speculating on what will happen. I just like to read it, look at right. it, and then talk about it. So other than I did not read Daredevil this last week yet, but the one to watch out for, I think, is also um, Typhoid Mary. I, she recently okay. just married Fisk. Um, yeah, she's she's now got a third personality. Yes. Damn. And which and one's that one? They haven't really revealed it yet, unless they did this week. I don't know. Did no, did they, they didn't reveal her. I, I read. I read it. Okay. 
I, I think she's just gonna, gonna be okay. Huge... I'll let you read it for yourself. Yeah. I if she does Corona. if she doesn't die, <laughs> she's gonna be a huge part of this, but she could be the catalyst that gets say, press to go crazy. What's going on, brother? Good to see everyone. All right, something see does you. happen at the it end, so many people did which there. which causes this, you know. So yeah, what happened, Brando? What'd you say? Oh, I just said good to see so many people. In the oh, dude, today. yeah, you heck know. yeah, man. We got the community buzzing, brother. We got my man Tino seventy three up here too. Bam! Boom. 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 Look at that segue. Yep. All right. Um, and then yeah. So thanks a lot, Brandon. What about you, Big Rob? What do you got? Well, uh, let's take it out of this sophisticated talk by comments and some bullshit here. Uh, <laughs> All right, I got to tell some mother f goose by Frank Deary, uh Joe Isma, and Amanda Connor. To me, it's a straight cover pick. Dude, look at this shit. It's Scarface. It's a goose. It's yeah. Pulp Fiction. It's Uma Thurman <laughs> on the cover, dude. You, that's an incentive, actually. That's like, I think, a one in 20, that, that Pulp Fiction one. That's the one I want, personally. Dude, these are badass. It just, I, I can't, I'm a sucker. It's two of my favorite movies of all time: Scarface and uh, yeah. Mother Goose. Uh, Mother Goose. Uh, Goose. Scarface and Fiction. Mother Goose. Mother <laughs> and Pulp Fiction. Jr. Rob's looking, making me look pretty good now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Brad, <laughs> say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yeah, dude, these, these, are, these are awesome. There's also another. There's a, the next cover in the next slide. It's a Gilbert Godfrey cover, right? <laughs> There is one more cover. Uh, yeah, this is a motherfucking uh, Blade Runner. This yeah, is actually a store, a store exclusive from uh, who was this? Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of the store, but uh, that's, that's an exclusive to a, to a store. Dude, this, this is just legit, dude. Look at this shit. There's a black uh, swan right there. Like, <laughs> he's yeah, the bad just, guy. just about to <laughs> quack. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking oh, awesome, dude. So, that's hey, great. Dude, Oh my god! Oh, good picks, big Rob. Good picks. <laughs> and I, I, got, I think I also have another cover coming coming up here. Though, so. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, from uh, James Biggie. I I've been picking up these uh, negative variants for Team and T from the, from the first one, Raphael. So they've done all the turtles. They've done Splinter. They've done Pro Neo and Casey Jones. And now they're moving on to Shredder. It's a cool uh, cover, I think. I like the uh, color purple choice on this. Um, it's old school kind of Shredder, very uh, you know. Uh, Eastman type, uh, so I'm assuming after this, it's gonna be probably be black and rock steady. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm going for so, a brain one, brain oh, would be brain. cool. Bearded they already comic, have, bro. What's cracking, brother? Hi, Greg. They already, have, they already have the color scheme because they did the pink for Splinter, so they could just use that again for, for right. brain. Yeah, um, real quick about Greg. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but Greg has a video coming out tomorrow interviewing the artist of Hotel from AWA. And then Ooh, I'll be interviewing the writers. So if you guys want to know more about that book, check out both nice. of those. Look out for them. Shout out to Bearded. Yes, yeah, I'll try. There, there's also an Optimus Prime on FOC. I, I definitely pre order yeah. that. Uh, I'm jumping on that train as well because I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be popular going oh. forward. Right. Wow, that that cover that uh, cover that you that you guys were showing before, that's um, at Red Raptor Comics exclusive. Okay. Oh, the uh, holding the yes, play run, yeah, the play runner. Okay, rat raptors. Mm. I I also heard uh, IDW lost the rights to Transformers. Are they going there to after a certain point? There's ru the rumor they lost their Hasbro, Hasbro license. Uh -oh. Uh, okay, so that's GI Joe and Transformers. That's the rumor. Mm -hmm. Is that actually true? I don't know. Is it doom? I hope that happens and goes to Marvel. That'd be fun. Man, That'd be crazy, crazy right? Man. I hope DC picks them up just to fuck with everyone. Nah. DC needs to pick oh, their balls no. up off the ground first, and then they can, <laughs> then they can fuck with people. Every, <laughs> JR, everything that I have said the past 20 minutes looked so elite compared to what we just heard. Copy, <laughs> I love you, brother. But <laughs> oh, no, I just did it as a complete, it, 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 it as like a sight gag. Just something just that would never happen. That no, would just no. be completely hilarious. Copy, just, just copy keep pinning your cat and be sexy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, to, keep uh, gushing over Catwoman and Harley Quinn, Quinn and Poison Ivy and, uh, and all the other. Firestar. Who else? Power Girl. You got to well, know. Yeah, maybe Boom or maybe Dark Horse. Yeah, Dark Boom Horse could do Star Wars. Well, Dark oh. Horse is getting Star Wars back. Right. So. Yeah. Is, ID, yeah. is IDW going under? Uh, pretty much. Time. They've been going under for like the last five years, slowly but surely. <laughs> they haven't. They haven't had a fiscal year where they've been 
positive. Probably. Yeah. In over five years, they've been losing about, I think, anywhere from 50 to 100 million every year. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's, they haven't lost Rick and Morty yet, so in my mind, they're still good. I love why they do it because I, I love all their license stuff. I've been buying all their license stuff for the last five years. and Yeah, you like their G.I. Joe stuff and yeah, yeah Star Wars, TMNT. Wars, TMNT. Well, they just I'm lost their license. DC Star doesn't Wars. have. Canto. DC doesn't have yep. uh, Rick and Morty. No. Yeah. But IDW does have Star Trek, and I've been buying yeah. every book Star of those. Star Trek. Yeah, too. What? What, what do you mean, what? Well, here we go. <laughs> you know this. Get out of here. It's right. too, no, no, it's too big smart for JR. Thanks a lot, Big Rob. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, all right. What, what's going on Speaking here, Speaking of which, yeah, Star, Wars. This show, <laughs> Star Wars, the only stars that count. Uh, yes, sir. Crimson Rain. Bite your tongue. <laughs> no, I'm not going to bite my tongue. Go um, ahead, JR. Go ahead, JR. <laughs> it's a new series. And Star Trek come down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Sorry, That's Star Trek doesn't need out a series of Bounty Hunter terrible. Wars. Um, also, if you recognize the girl on the cover there, she is Kira from the Han Game Solo Thrones. movie. <laughs> Khaleesi. Well, Khaleesi oh, also from Game Khaleesi. of Thrones. Oh yeah. But Blur. this should be an interesting series because now we're going to kind of get another bad guy esque book. It's going to be from the Crimson Rain, Crimson Rain um, gang, I guess you can call them, whatever, yeah. faction. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. I'm, I'm glad they're kind of diversifying. We're not getting all Luke and Leia and all the fun people. You already know, Inja. Um, yeah. Plus, Kira is a badass <laughs> in this book. Yes. And hopefully we get some Darth Maul. Maybe this will tie into some of the end of... Solo, since we may not get a Lando show, who knows? But I'm looking forward to this. I believe I have another set of covers, also. I'm so excited yes. for this. Me and JR are just like agreeing tonight. I love yeah. you guys. Are in, you guys are a succinct, even. I know. What's up? Which I I love all four of these covers. I think they're all great. Um, I would have also include Ben from CBSI has a cover that they're doing on the whatnot. That is also amazing. But I didn't have a copy of it to, to add to the slide. Canadian geek, what's cracking, brother? Good to see you. I wonder, what else to for this? This. I wonder if we did a cameo from Dan, J Dan Jaren in this. We might. That'd be interesting. Because I don't think he's appeared in the book yet, right? Has he? Don Jaren? I thought he did. Yeah, the Mandalorian from the show. Huh? Did he? Oh, no, he hasn't. So, yeah. He could it's show up. It's going to be a, a five or a six issue series. Um, I'm not so sure. I wasn't even sure if it was just, I imagine it was just a mini, but. I think it's, it is a mini series. I don't think it's a long term thing, but no more than eight. No. JR, are you getting this on your poll? Oh, yeah. I'm going to try and get whatever covers I can. Five. Five, five? issue? Five issue. The the one that everybody wants to get is that Raza, the one before in the leather slide, that red cover with the um, yes, what's the, what's the, the paladron, the paladron one. Raza is freaking awesome. The yeah. one like the crimson. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 the red shit. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. So yep. that's all I have for my picks for this week. All right, thank you, sir. And now, all right, talk to us, uh, Anthony. All right, so. We have Batman number 118, uh, new writer, new artist, because it is now, you know, uh, this week, uh, well, last week, actually, I should say, Fear State ended with Batman Fear State Omega, which means the end of James Tinian's run, Yay. the end of Jorge uh, Molina's run. So with Josh Williamson, we're going to have Jorge Corona. Oh, that's not. I believe if I'm, that's right. You know, so they're starting with a new character, you know, a la DC, you know, which they claim that they want to have a new character in every book, pretty much. But this is a new villain called Abyss, as you can see in the design variant. Mm -hmm. um, then you also got the main, uh, not the main cover, sorry, one of the variant covers, which is a play off of Todd McFarlane's work with Spider-Man. Yeah, I was wondering if that's the case. Yep. 
Wait, Anthony, I got a question for you real quick. Yeah. If if you if you're a Batman fan, right? He's been going on since not late 1930s, and he's had probably maintain two titles for the majority of his time in comics, right? At least two going sometimes right. three, four, yeah, five. Batman detective. How right. do you make sometimes twenty. Sometimes twenty, mm. right? <laughs> so how do you make how do you make that different from everything that comes before you create a new character? So I don't really see what the issue is. Always. When like DC does that if it's organic. And it on, takes a story. Well, every every writer is going to bring their own style, their own view of Batman. Not every writer has, you know. So Batman is always fresh at at the beginning. Everyone is excited to see what Joshua Williamson will do, just like they were excited to see what James Tynion was going to do when he took over for Tom King. Okay, you know, maybe he'll do something different great i mean we have a new character in abyss don't know who he is i mean abyss looks pretty badass with that sickle in his hand you know um what's his history with batman we we won't know till we read it so right now um on league of comic geeks it's the number one pull book for the week so people are excited for this are you excited me yes I'm definitely looking forward to this. Um, I'll be picking up at least two of the covers, maybe three. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying not to speculate as much. Just like you, I like reading the books and then answering the questions, then and seeing possibly where the writer uh, will will lead us. So new writer, new artist, but same fucking right. covers, right? Spider-Man homage, designer cover. Yeah. Well, well, but, really well, no, 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 no. It's... A lot of books have done Spider-Man homages, but you know, when people first saw this, and myself included, we all thought that was gonna that Todd McFarlane did the cover. Because it almost looks like McFarlane, but yeah, it was right? Victor yeah. Bogdanovich. Oh, okay. Even that Batman fighting the whatever his name is, there's at least like 50 Batman covers just drawn like that. It's I uh, do. The cover's got to change. It's, but, it's, it's almost when, the same thing. Well, but, it's... well, answer answer me this: Whenever there's a a new series, a new uh, artist, okay. When it comes to DC, Marvel, and even Image, do they not put out a gazillion covers at the launch? Well, oh. yes, yes. But what I think yeah. he's saying is, so why would this be different? Well, what he's saying though is. Right now, DC is putting out. When you put out for anything, we want new covers. We don't want give us a t don't give us a ten issue cover again. Don't give us homages right. to all this crap. Is is what he's getting at? I have a short is, box of this shit. By the way. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I can have I have this this pose probably on ten different books yeah. by ten different characters by ten different artists. Ten. I mean, there's probably that many there's of them. More, I'm sure there's a lot more than that. Well, there's yeah. a lot more. That's what he owns. Yeah, I yeah. know, yeah, but... but what I'm, I'm just saying offhand. You probably I mean, have I, more than that. I, I don't know. I mean, my thing is this. I'm, in general, DC, until they can do a character other than Batman yeah. and make, like, 20 titles in a week, I, I don't care anymore. DC is... Might as well just call themselves Bat's Bitch. Because... <laughs> That's all they put out. They put well, out 10 different Batman books to 20 different Batman books a month. And they just don't care about like anyone other than maybe Superman gets a book. Maybe now his son gets a book. Wonder Woman. What about like other characters like the Adam and what happened to Hulk Justice, Man? Justice Society, Hawkman? Yeah. All cares. these other characters, it's like and I, I I agree with you, but who's well, again, their, who, here's who's the, their main character? Who's their well? Number here's one here's character? the thing. Let me interject. DC it's their has, only character at this point. Go ahead, Brandon. DC, DC has always really gotten their sales from the characters that they pushed when they first got like their Barry Allen, Hal Jordan, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman all together for the Justice League. Those were really all the books that really centered around. And I was talking about this with uh, with one of my friends earlier. When you look at Marvel, 
you know all the characters because you're just used to seeing them. So then right. obviously you see characters you're like, oh, then I'm just going to go read their series, right? Look at Spider-Woman in the early 2000s and New Avengers, Luke Cage, all those characters. In DC, you only see the same characters, right? The first time that was ever done where they had everyone was Christ on Infinite Earth, 1987, okay? DC got a little bit better, but you really only see every character in these events. You're not used to seeing them. And I think that's what JR is alluding to, and I completely agree with that. So right. I I disagree to a point. Before, after Crisis on Infinite Earths, and before New Fifty Two, DC was very very good at diversifying their talent, and diversifying the books they had, the characters they had, and how they utilized them. But the problem was is that DC thought that they needed to get a fresh new fan base. Meanwhile. They they were fleshing out characters. DC's a revolving door copy. They've huh? been a revol- They've been a revolving door, right? Yeah. I, like I love Grant Morrison's. I love Grant Morrison's Justice League of America simply because you didn't yeah. get that revolving role feel. We're okay if this character's there. Here's their backup, right? Or we're just gonna yeah start start from. You kind of saw everybody together. You oh. saw the JSA. You saw the Justice League, you saw Kyle yeah. Rayner, you saw a lot of the, even some of the legacy characters when Superman came back and Batman was there, but they weren't necessarily the, the, um, holy God. I mean, we even saw a Hippolyta on that team and that was but, a big, a big change, but yeah. I would say that didn't, that hasn't really done enough. They really haven't done a whole lot with a lot of their other characters the, and spend them trying, into their own They're series. starting to try to do that soon. They realize they screwed that up. They they they've been and they've been course correcting slowly. So there's well, gonna be a book to... that comes out called One Star Squadron, where they're gonna get some of the people you don't see a lot of, right. like Let's Power see. Girl and Red Tornado. But, the, but the Batman other... is the money maker. I think Jared right. wants to say something. But, but the <laughs> oh, other sorry. the other issue is this: the if you take Batman out of the equation. Because Batman is the most Marvel character that DC has. Right. They've got this list of all these great characters that are gods. And the problem is that, that people don't know how to write a good Superman story. It's really hard to write about these characters that are not relatable. And they need to figure out how to do that. Because they've got so much great stuff there. Yes, but they rely on Batman to keep him afloat. Batman they should be two titles a month, and sells. that's it. They, they it's like this to, sells. We well, need to do everything but we the can. Pro- right, but the problem is, you, it gets to the point where it's like, it's Batman's universe, and these other characters are living in his universe. Pretty much, right. yeah. And can, that's just to me is just dumb. Right. It, it Sorry. is. No, you're right. You're right. But you have. Batman, like, like, as far as the top 25 books that come out every month, how many of them would you say are DC? Out of the top 25? Maybe yes. two. Okay. And that's Batman and Detective. Two, yeah. that, okay. So, I, I but, get what you're saying. Right. But have some fucking balls, is what <laughs> I'm saying. This is DC we're talking about. I understand. They, they, they cut DC their balls off years ago. Get, DC's <laughs> never gonna get better if they don't try. Well, like DC, I, I, for God's sake, had our man for like two. I mean, like they hundred issues. When they let go, when they let go of Jeff Johns, okay, that was that was it. I knew that because he he <sighs> he single handedly resurrected DC. He he did, but this is the thing: Jeff Johns was only good to a certain point. I'm sorry, yeah, as but, I, but, I love but Jeff Johns, but did. like. The, he did the, the Green did Lantern Resur- Green Lantern Resurrection. That was the Dark Phoenix saga. Let, yeah. let, let's be honest. Making <laughs> Parallax an entity, he's the fucking Phoenix Force. Of course, he's flat but... out the Phoenix Force. <laughs> I wouldn't say I mean, that. I would say that no, but, for what about the, other the story in the early nineties when. Hal Jordan became when Hal Jordan and Parallax merged, and you had the whole final night, and you had that whole storyline in the early nineties. But that was Mike Mars. 
That's yeah, yeah, yeah but it, that's but that road. is more Dark Phoenix than Green Lantern Rebirth. Go back and read Rebirth. I uh, trust Go back me. Back and read it. I I kind of have to you. agree with Jr. I feel like one yeah. of the. Uh, I feel oh, like oh, um, one of the strengths for the New Fifty Two and in Rebirth was that they started with an abundance of titles that included a vast amount of characters, right? But then after a year, they were all cut. You never really saw any other of these characters cross over in other titles, <laughs> right? They would just pop up in their own, and you wouldn't care because the creativeness wasn't there, the teams weren't there, but you would always have an abundance of Batman books. You cut the Batman books and address that talent in other areas and elevate all these characters, you wouldn't have to create new ones to get fans attached to now because they would already have a handful to be attached to. Right? Yeah. So way more many characters coming out of DC. Yes, too many. It's the big problem is, forget, is that there are forget. there are so many characters that fans are attached to that they want to see. But you that have so many Batman titles being showcased because there's <laughs> if you take even half the Batman books and that comment up. And say, for instance, this one. Eh. Yes. So, if you literally take half it. the Batman books and you decide to it. diversify them out, if you make one of them a Justice Society book, people will eat that alive because that's what they did yeah, for a you're decade. You're not going to see Justice. You're not going to see the Justice Society until there's like this big event, uh, like Infinite Frontier, yeah. right? That's what well, we did. That, that's we saw Infinity that Inc. Need. That's so. Infinity. Infinity Inc. is kind of like I would call Infinity Inc. like the Titan, like, like if we have, but they haven't the, done the team, that in a while. The they, haven't they haven't done, done it in problem. a long time. But they I'm just saying, while, like that but... happened and it got people excited. Yeah, yeah but it, as soon as DC has a continuity thing that they need to push, all these other side characters get dropped. They get brought back in when that big event is culminating. You don't care where they are just because they show up when you have some big. Yeah, technically, event. Well, I mean. So there's Don't been a lot of bitten. teases that they are coming back. Well, but where we'll, are they? We'll They're see. just teases. The, no one cares. The problem yeah. is it's hard. It's hard to come back when you have a bunch of weeds. When you have a bunch of Batman books taking exactly. Up all the that's right. the, that's the I point. Mean, Another thing is to get to this comment about Fridge and a girlfriend. Right. They did the wrong character. It should have been the girlfriend should have lived. They should have put Rainer in the fridge <laughs> and did it that way. Because <laughs> Rainer is a little bitch of a character. No, it much better if no, his girlfriend. No. Was the Green Lantern? It'd be no, a lot more. That I like Rainer. Oh no, no, no. I like want a what if of that. I'm sorry. Oh, he's Kyle like Rainer this is where... is the best Green Lantern. I don't want to hear oh, anyone say oh, anything. No, he has the best Green Lantern. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's okay. I agree with Brandon. What do you guys think of Hawkeye? Let's talk about Hawkeye for a minute. Yeah, come on, episode three, Hawkeye. Awesome, amazing. Am I still muted? Such no, a you're good, Brandon. You're good. Oh, you're I took you might have a moment right now. He might be like, No, no I gotta go him back off. to this. <laughs> I took him off it. The you're good, girl, Brandon. You're good. The, the little girl is awesome, dude. She's a good actress. Yeah, I, yeah I'm man, sorry. I, I, Such a dick teaser episode. <laughs> I like the dog. <laughs> Poor choice of words. I like the dog. <laughs> I like the yeah, dog. The dog. Yeah, the dog. Pizza dogs is legit, man. He's great. Yeah. Oh, I love Hawkeye, by the way, guys. Oh, dude. That's <laughs> it, Brandon. That's what we wanted to know, bro. Yes. <laughs> we had to know, bro. Tell us what you think. Break it down, baby. Hit me with it, Brandon. So I'm a huge fan of the Matt Fraction Hawkeye. Um, I would say for someone my age, I've never really seen an MCU movie, like, copy and paste that, of a book that, like, I've been following, like, for a very long time like it's in my generational reading i would say right? right um like so like when people saw thanos who like started picking that up from the rack i can like their excitement i felt that in this you know um you're getting to know one of my favorite characters <laughs> maya lopez echo um yeah. i'm a huge daredevil fan much like my man jr up there who's just like i said the biggest kyle rayner fan too but oh. um, what I really oh, like Jordan's is the out. only one. He's, as, he's, a, he's as much a Kyle Rayner fan <laughs> as he is a, as a Spider-Man fan. So oh. I really, oh. really, really oh. enjoy uh, all like the worse than, than Kyle okay. Rayner's Spider-Man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a highly, arm full of I really fan, enjoy fan, right? um, all of like the little nods to the Fraction run that they had, not so little. Um, I really enjoyed seeing um, Echo on the big screen. I thought her character was 
was great. Uh, we actually covered this ep- this run or the first volume of it on archives for everyone to go check out. That was a lot of fun. We got to see Lucky in here, and we're getting to know more about Kate in the big screen. And I'm excited that they're her character isn't all copy and paste. Like they, she has a lot of uh, big character differences and a lot of more spark than she did in the comics, which I'm excited to see. Uh, they're really doing this film so well, or this this TV show really well, and it feels cinematic. Uh, much like any of the other shows. I'm okay with Guy Gardner. Is, uh, yes! Is... Get out of here with Guy Gardner! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that no. Guy Gardner is the There's shit. There's at least no. 10 green to spare than... Can we talk about Hawkeye, please? Before Big Rob, I need, yeah, Big Rob, we need an enforcer. Big Rob, oh, we need an enforcer. Man. We're getting it taken over right now. <laughs> I, I don't want to have to correct everyone on the panel. Let's talk about Hawkeye, <laughs> please. Oh, no. My question oh, we is, love Hawkeye. We got it. Does the swordman does the swordman live or die at the show? Maximus, I'm gonna kick you. No, don't you dare say that about Ultra Maximus. If, if what he put there, yeah, that that is Kingpin. That's not General Drakov or whatever. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That's Warrior. Kingpin. Does the swordman live or die at, uh, during this show? He's gonna die. He's gonna die. He's gonna die. And he's just a yeah. tool. He's a tool. I'm gonna kill him that quickly. One of the old school cool. Avengers, huh? Okay. Kill him all. He, he did. Well, <laughs> there's been a couple swordsmen, I thought. Guys, there? there's been a few. I believe there's been a few. Yeah, there's been a few. Because I was also talking to, because if you go back to the origin of Hawkeye and his brother Barney, I believe his brother Barney at one point was also the swordsman, and he learned it from this character jock that was like ran the circus that they are in mm. um or at least they're, i think they're melding those two kind of things together yeah so they're also but then there's also swordsman that was part of the avengers right. and i i do want hawkeye to wear a mask with a big h in his fucking yeah yeah no <laughs> no, 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 dude, yeah, no why, I, yeah just, I totally want that no pay yeah, that homage God. dude pay that homage you know what how about he, he he'll put it on for an episode and then take it off and just be like, "This is ridiculous." Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. They or rips that, or birds. They did that or once already with uh, Luke Cage. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right, guys. What do you guys think about what's going on with uh, Spider-Man AMC? I mean, we're talking about. AMC. Oh boy! All right, here we go. So, <laughs> oh, shit. he's been waiting to talk about. Uh, that. Yeah, he's oh, like, I'm gonna throw these. About Spider-Man. He said, I'm yeah, gonna throw these. Yes. What happened? I don't know what happened. I worked for AMC for six years. All right, I'm very qualified to talk about this. Hit him with it, baby. So, um, the eBay stuff that's going on right now, absolutely ridiculous. Also, no one's getting trampled for tickets because everybody's buying them online. So that's a crock of shit right there. Um. As for what's going on with the websites and everything, yes, everything did crash. Yes, people had to go to weird websites to get their ticket. So (laughs) the reason why everyone is selling their online tickets for so much money is for the NFT. So it's is it ridiculous? Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. Is an NFT worth it? I don't think Mm. so. Because, I mean, if you look down... There's 86,000 of them. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be very valuable, people. 86,000 NFTs. So everybody right now is just experiencing complete FOMO. Even on Monday, when tickets went, uh, when were like on sale for two days, the website was still down. So if you're going to get your tickets, just get them and watch the movie anywhere. The NFT is not going to be worth it in this case. That's all I have to say. I got my tickets, but for AMC. Copy. Can you sell them to me through through uh, IG claim sale, please? Um, I have the <laughs> they're they're physical copies because oh, then then I will um what well, what was that you were saying earlier? I will trample you for your tickets. Can you send <laughs> since since the NFT is not going to be worth any money? Do you want to send it to Alonzo for safekeeping? I don't have the NFT because I got. Remember, I used to work there. I have connections, so the oh, amount okay. of money that the NFT costs is the amount of money people. I paid for the tickets. So, so copy. which is this? 
since I don't live that far which, from you. Which means he did this. Or the oh, poster. hell no. Oh, hell no. I guess you won't be in the running to get the poster I'm going to get either. Oh, damn. Oh. Like I, you, do you remember? Not a Spider-Man fan. Really? I thought he was your buddy. I thought you had hey, a, you yeah. I thought you had a company. Movie. Gary can watch this movie. I can get the movie. Since I, don't so, live, I don't live that I haven't bought my ticket you. yet. Yeah. I got I got it for AMC, but I got I got it through Fandango. I wonder if I get that or not. Yeah, you could do it through Fandango. Fandango's website went up, um, went back up really quickly. The AMC website was down for about forty eight hours. You could also use stuff like Adam tickets, like uh, Adam, for uh, getting your tickets as well. That one didn't go down, but I'm just saying, if anybody, and this is going to be a real talk for a minute. If anyone is concerned about like any COVID restrictions or anything like that, or you have someone that's immunocompromised, do not go opening weekend because all the tickets are pretty much sold out and yeah. all the auditoriums are going to be packed. There is no longer a buffer between the seats. So the way it was before COVID is the way it is now. So if you're going to get your tickets, get them for a matinee during the week. Or get them on any day. Get them on Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Not Tuesday, because Tuesday the tickets are cheaper. Yeah, I was going to say, with the whole thing with the Omicron virus. Yeah. You know, was in New York, they, you know, they're trying to reinstate certain certain rules. Yeah, you like know, where so, like employees have to wear masks right now. Right. So they may question is if by that time they start reinstating restrictions, uh, you know, and <clears> they, <throat> they need buffer spaces between people in the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. That's going to make a lot of people unhappy. Well, the the good the easy way to avoid that. And this is going to sound a little callous, but. If two people are going to see a movie, buy the seat next to each of you. Like if you have the first, second, if you have the first, the second, and third seat in a row, buy seat one and seat four. Man, you're a baller if you have that much. Just money. before. Well, right. here here's a hint. So you could do that and then just be like, hey, they didn't come. Yeah. Can I get a pass <laughs> to see another movie? Yeah. They'll do it, that. Baby. That's yeah. it. Now you they you and they'll can give do you that. money back. Well, sad people yeah. want to buy the people behind me. Worry about them I, coughing on my neck and shit. I mean, then you just just wear something on your neck. Wear a hoodie. Well, wear a hoodie. Yeah, there you I go. Mean, with I mean, with AMC because I know that they tend to have the seats that go back. So I mean, there's about six feet of room between the person behind you and the and where you yeah. I know I'm kidding Anthony I would not I'm not worried about it. Well here's the thing too if you're if you live in New York and you're going into the city Empire and Lincoln Square do not have reclining chairs. They well, still have the traditional seating. So if you're gonna go to a big theater like that in Manhattan, in all seriousness, be careful. And this is for everyone yeah. else too around the country. Make certain that you give yeah. yourself enough space between the next person with everything going on wear a mask in the auditorium when you're not eating or drinking just try and just try and be safe because use, use wisdom yeah um anime um the uh anime convention in the javits center a lot of people got omicron from that yeah yeah i heard so, that and San Diego comic con yeah so just just be safe out there everybody i know we all want to see this movie I know we're all trying to get tickets for opening night, but if you have those concerns, just do it during the week. Yeah, yeah the anime convention was someone gave the gift that kept on giving. So, yeah, <laughs> you, you can also just take off your clothes when you sit in there, and I'm sure a lot of people vacate the area too. Yeah, <laughs> oh, assert dominance, God. sit naked in a movie yeah. theater in public, just start stroking it. <laughs> Hey, I didn't say do anything to yourself. I just said naked. I mean, Aunt May does look a lot better in these in this universe. So yeah, some yeah, mayonnaise. put some mayonnaise. Yeah, some mayonnaise on. <laughs> Get some oh, mayonnaise. Oh, man. Poppy, I didn't know you had eyes for Aunt May. Oh, I don't, but I'm just saying. I've seen the Marissa memes Tomei out there. Marissa is fucking hot, though. Hey, man, it's a milf, bro. What are you talking about? Shit. There oh, he man. is. Gorgeous. 
He is anyway. gorgeous. All day, all day. Oh, Jedi Knight. Scott Yo, Chet. what's up, Chet? Uh -oh. What's crapping, brother? What's crapping? Good to see you, brother. There all right, is. guys. So what do you guys think about the, this week's covers? Oh. Oh, man, that Stray Dog's it, dude. I know you sent that out to us, Alonzo, and uh, that was uh, yeah. that was the one to pick up, man. I, I checked that out, man, but you know me, dude. I got I to gotta go for that gun hunting up there. Yeah, I right? was wondering if Boom, you were going to mention that. If you didn't mention it within 10 seconds, Steve, I was going to call you out on it. <laughs> yeah, you, right? know, you, you, know, we, you know we ain't waiting 10 seconds. I had to look up there. She looks Jesus gorgeous, Christ, man. man. <laughs> I'll pass on all of them. What? I kind of like the Christmas one. I'm kind of with JR here. The, the, oh, my God. I'm just, the, the straight, the the stray Dogs is good, but yeah. the problem is that there's like 20 million yeah. variant covers of Stray Dogs that right should now. Yeah, no. that should and I'm work. just like, okay, we're we're done next. Just like Batman. The, the Turtle one looks like the same fucking Ronin covers we've gotten. Yep. I like the Christmas uh, one. I like the Christmas Turtle one. That one's not bad. Yeah. The yeah, Hulk one is kind of cute. Bro. Interesting, yeah. Is that an alien? <laughs> the that alien. That's alien, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> cool. I think that's Barraza. Yeah, copy. I don't Copied know what the, you, bro. the one no. the alien one is, the sex act one. Yeah, that's by Jim Bartel, obviously. I don't I like know what the... that is. Next to Knuckle. I mean, but Jim oh, Bartel is really like the same pose. Oh, yeah. is that yeah. a Rolling Stones uh, cover right there? But Jim, yeah. yeah, that's Rolling yeah, Stones. Rolling yeah. Stones nod, yeah, yeah. Department of yeah. Truth. Yeah. Jim Bartel, she needs to do something with the eyes. She draws the same freaking eyes all the time. But she's dead good eyes. at it, dude. She's, she's you like them dead eyes? It depends on the eyes. Do you like those? It's all in the eyes, baby. It's all in the eyes. It's in the eyes. I was no term because of the eyes. It's all in the eyes. What's the one between like aliens and... Right like, what's up? You know what we're doing. But the alien, the alien ones by Raza, as far as I know... I'm looking What's forward to the Black Widow number 15. Is that oh, what that yeah. is? Is Black Widow? Yeah, yeah the yeah, Adam, Adam Hughes, Hughes, right? Yeah, yeah. the Adam Hughes. He, dude, he's been win? killing it. That what was a comic top? mint. That was a comic mint that just came out this week. Or yesterday. That looks like a Rose Besh. Is that Besh? Another Ooh, artist. Which one? The artist. No, Rose I win. think it's another artist, I think. This one? Not, that one? No, that's yeah. not Besh. Shannon Mayer, I think, right? I'm no, just saying no. it looks like it. I didn't say yeah. it was. Oh, sorry. I think yeah, it I don't know if that's Mayor either. Um, Let me see. This one? It's a comic. That's, that's the Amazing Spider-Man. Woo or, no, or uh, 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 Warren Liu or whatever, isn't oh, it? That one. Well, it's it's one of the colorists. Frank Cho uses her. Okay. Um. Oh my God, I forgot. It is a it is a comic man. Sabine Rich. Yeah, yeah Sabine Rich. Oh, bam! Right there, your boy. Oh, okay. Nice, Steve. Oh. Yeah, boy. Did you did you guys hear that five, Charlie five, Cox five. has been confirmed for the MCU? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Can we get another? Woo! Now we can get Tanafrio confirmed. Air five, Brando. Yeah. Oh, that's it, dude. Yes, you too, Jr. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, here goes Anthony, dude. <laughs> Come on, Anthony. <laughs> he's a little no. spirit in here. He's like. Anthony's never happy about Cox. We all know this. <laughs> Wait, what? Don't take the wind out of hey us. Oh. Well, we, were, we were just oh. talking about Dick just a little bit ago when we were talking about the. <laughs> that was copy that was decided about. Uh, about Dick. The Nightwing Dick. Uh, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't remember saying anything about that. Oh, no, no, you, you're, you're all out there. He prefers about to be called Richard. <laughs> 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 the pro the proper so what is it? Knuckles here. blood. It's a Sanctum Sanctorium exclusive. I don't know what this book is about, but the JR, cover is pretty I cool. almost thought you said nipples blood. Let me tell you. <laughs> Why no, I hope nipples blood? never bleed. God bless. Oh you. man. Yeah, we tried it. Okay. All right, uh, knuckles blood. Yeah. Am I uh, wonder if it's like uh, closer to an MMA title or something like that? I don't know. I haven't read the synopsis of this but sanctum usually has some pretty like dope covers man i used yeah, to i used to buy them prior you know like when i first started coming into the like about a year ago and then i just kind of had to slow down man otherwise i was gonna you know well, broke. Well, how am i gonna get these wonderful and, toys and really okay. run you dry yep yep no one likes right, to be dry like and, that's what she uh, said that's right uh -huh. twice and this is oh, looking shit. 
we no. have Spider-Man 2099. So what do you guys think of the uh, teaser? That was a nice teaser. I, Dude. Oh, that was dope. I just don't care about 2099. Oh, what? Are you serious, bro? Dude, no, that I was just a, don't care about him. That was such a dope part in the movie where he's flying through. Miles is flying through, and then you freaking get Miguel and just hit him right then and there, dude. But it, it, the, the trailer was epic. It just I Whoa. cutting right into the end of the movie. Wait, a that's what I was gonna say. It, it, it takes it's a teaser right? trailer exactly at the end of the movie. Oh, I didn't movie. see the teaser trailer. That yeah, it. the teaser trailer. Oh, the, 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 oh you spoiled. The, I just heard that um 2099 was gonna be in there. And I was like, oh, who cares? Oh, I no, no yeah, trailer. Brando, we're still friends, right? Um, I, I'm kind of Team Jr. tonight. I'm sorry. Oh, he is. Spider Man India is in it. Steve, then, you yeah, haven't texted Spider-Man. me in a week. No, just kidding. So I'm, I'm kind of bitter about it. Whatever about this movie, I don't know, man. <laughs> but I'll check it out. It'll be a decent movie. I can't. Yeah, be right. I can't believe that you know in one month we're gonna be in 2022, and before you know it, this movie will be in theaters. Yep. Chet doesn't like spoilers. No, oh, Chet, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I sent him the link, and I am gonna have to deal with it later. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I, I was gonna send the link here. Here's here's the teaser trailer. It's it's uh, in the chat. If you guys want to kind of check it out, get a good watch, guys. Great. It's awesome. And and that's where you find out that they're breaking this movie into two parts. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Interesting. In some ways, I kind of hate that. Oh, it's two minutes oh, long. It, that's a long time. Yeah, the, the second part's coming in tw- in 2023, so they're going to be back to back. This is this is what uh, Jr. said to copy me. Yeah. No, Jr. You watched this, right? I mean, because Kingpin. I watched that the ass, first right? one. I hated the way they drew Kingpin in it, but I like. Sure. It. Yeah, he but you like that he whooped that ass, though, right? Yeah, he looked like he, was, he had a sofa on his back. Yeah, he did. He was carrying yeah, something. Dude. He looked like yeah. Igor or something like that. Igor, yeah, cancer or something. Yeah, poor guy. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. Chad, I'm looking much love, brother. Great. Sorry about that. Um, and, and this one is for uh, Steve and also for Glenn Two K Twelve. Oh um, yes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming on Netflix February the eighteenth. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Steve? We'll start with you. Man, I can't <laughs> wait, dude. I love what happened. Anthony, you afraid? Anthony ran. Yeah, Anthony dude, better, like horror. He saw his reflection. I like right. yeah. he, he doesn't like horror. He was like, oh, what's that face? Oh, no. Man, I, I just I just can't wait to see it just because I, I barely found out earlier today. So I, for me, I'm like, I, I can't wait to watch the trailer. I haven't watched it yet. So when I do, I already know. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre for me is, I thought it was an awesome horror flick. The earlier was a little bit different because it was experimental. They did. They try to be as gory as possible and stuff like that. And then kind of moving into the newer age of these flicks, I actually like them. Um, so I'm willing to see what this is all about. And uh, horror, man, right up my alley. So I am stoked and ready for February 18th. What about you guys? Do we know if this is a Bloomhouse film? Because I know they have a deal with Netflix. That's what I'm asking. This is Netflix? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Netflix. Because yeah. Netflix. Bloomhouse usually... Usually does a pretty good job with movies like this. Yeah, um, dude. When I saw the teaser for it um, on Twitter, it, it I didn't see the Bloomhouse logo, so I don't. I'm okay. not 100 sure. Okay, yeah, I'll have I to look need an IDB or something. Yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, it'll it it'll be interesting. I'm just wondering if Netflix will let them go as dark as they want to go. I think they will. Probably. I just find it interesting that they're releasing a horror movie right after Valentine's Day. Why? They always Some do. people don't want to love. Yeah, yeah. usually <laughs> February is horror films now. Oh, they <laughs> usually have horror <laughs> movies around yeah. Valentine's Day. So, so I want to hit them with the Dave Chappelle. I mean, one thing old in school, copy they, they should they should release it. I mean, during the summer, springtime. Yeah. Well, Valentine's well, Valentine's well, this Day. is the Halloween thing, movie, bro. But after this, between Halloween and Valentine's Day. Myth. Well, well, this is the chill, thing. Bro. At least when I worked at Blockbuster, this was the case, and Copy could probably verify this working at movie theater. There are certain months of the year that are just kind of like they're dead months. Right. So a lot of times you'll have like February is very much kind of a dead month. October yeah. is a dead month. Christmas used to uh, be a even dead. even like late right. August. August is yeah. is like a dead month. So a lot of times they'll put out 
these low budget movies um, at that time of year. Right. They make money. And, right, and they and they make they do hand over fist. You see a lot of horror movies coming out in February. You don't believe it, but go back and look. There's a lot of them that. No, I believe it. I'm just. Oh, so no. Jr. is right. Quarter one of the year is usually very slow because That's you get the blockbusters course. from October, November, December, and these types of movies come out in February. Just because it is that kind of month. Also, there's no competition. So the box office gross will be higher. And with the amount of horror movie fans, you're going to get those grosses. You're going to get those people that want to see it. Even though it is a romantic day for Valentine's Day, a lot of people find, like a lot of couples find pleasure in going to watch a horror movie because it's what they like to do. That's that's Big Spoon, Little Spoon right there. The very end of the night. Chill, bro. Netflix yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, no. come here, baby. You know? <laughs> After this beheading, let's fuck. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big Rob, dude. <laughs> just, just, right, just shove it Man, in. Man, right? night? <laughs> just, just Big Rob just hit it right there, dude. Uh, there you go. Thumbs yeah. in the Kool-Aid tonight, man. <laughs> Thumbs in the Kool Aid. Damn. Booty two wow. shoots over here. <laughs> All right. All right, copy. Bam. Uh, what do you got going on this week? <clears throat> oh, All right. So, mystery box. Oh, dick in a box. Yeah, dick, dick in a box. box. There you pop. go. Hit him with it, copy. Hit him with it, baby. All right. So, um, I got a lot of books that don't fit into my collection. So I decided to <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like I know, man. Let the man, let the man plug his box, damn it. So we don't want to see him plug his box. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can't with you people. So I hope you can't plug your box with us here. <laughs> so, oh my god. So I decided I would give a shot at doing a mystery box. And in each box is 15 to 18 books. And uh, every box has a signed print from Keith Williams. He's a local comic book artist. He did a lot of stuff in the late 80s and early 90s for both Marvel and DC. And uh, a lot of Spider Man. Um, yes, he did. So I had him do a commission for me, which is the very first print you see, which is the Amalgam Comics. And Ooh. I had him do the character designs for me. And put them on a separate piece of paper. So all of these are prints. And one of these prints will be in every single box. Every print is signed and numbered. And it comes with this business card in case you're wondering about any commission. If, about having him do commissions because he is open to them. So there's 15 to 18 books in each box. And uh, out of those I have five books that everyone's going to get. Because my buddies over at Absolute Comics um, provided me with some of these books. And everyone's going to get them. Those books alone have a cover price value of $40. And a lot of these books are on the rarer side because they're from an indie publisher that doesn't really print that much. So these are all the covers. Um, three of these covers have a $10 value. Two of them have a four to, uh, $5 value. And they're, they will all be in absolutely perfect condition, never read. So these are in every single box. And uh, you'll also get a couple stickers as well that I end up having to be made. They'll be in the bag with the print. And the print is going to be the size of a modern comic. So that way it can fit inside a bag, easier for storage. That's cool. And there will be one book in every single box. One book is going to have a value of $10 or more. It could be a signed book. It could be a variant. It could be just a harder to find book. But some of the really cool books that I do have is X-Men Adventures number one. I have three newsstand copies floating around. One in each, one in each box. I have a Batman Zero from New 52, which is... Batman's origin story from New 52, signed by both Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. I have the complete Dark Side War storyline from the New 52 Justice League. 
I have a White Widow number four, Greg Horn variant, signed by the writer, by, uh, I'm sorry, by the cover artist, Greg Horn, the writer, Benny Powell, and the creator, Jamie Tidell. I also have Mad Love, which is a famous Harley Quinn storyline. You should all, everyone should know that. And the grand prize is Noctera 1 through 6, all signed by Scott Snyder. Very nice. So yeah. you're not going to find, you're not going to find Noctera 1 through 6 signed by Scott Snyder anywhere else. I've never seen it. I've seen number one signed, and that's it. So this is your chance to get the full run. And, and that is the get, grand prize. Yeah, it's worth ab- over. It's worth about hundred and twenty dollars because of the covers that are you that um, Scott Snyder did sign. So you'll get that, and uh, the price of the box is forty dollars shipped, not plus shipping, shipped to the U.S. International, I'm opening this up to international people because not not a lot of people do it. So I figured, you know what? Why not? I'll do it. $55 shipped international. And um, if you mind making me big very quickly, I have an example of a box Uh-oh. right over here. Who's got to make me big? I'm making not making doing big. that. Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not making you big. Uh, I'm not touching them. JR. <laughs> <You're doing laughs> well. so, nope. we so this is an example Every box will be shipped in a Gemini mailer. And this is what the mailer looks like. Ooh. That, that Ooh, is a big box, yo. Yeah. So it is. Chewy is not sponsoring the mailers, I guess. Uh, no, they are not. But this is... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is what the mailer is going to look like. It is a fat freaking Gemini. This is jam-packed are, with are books. Are we still talking about the, the mailer? So... <laughs> Built to the brim, dude. So this well, is going to be filled up. Mailer. I have sent out some boxes already. You can ask Inja, or you can just take a look at her video. She showed off, I'd say, like three quarters of the content that was in the box. Cool. I have a couple people who also ordered one as well. So mm-hmm. take a look. And if you want to get one, just send me a DM on Instagram. Man, I'll be more than happy to take care of you. I'll be nice sending out off. anybody who sends me a DM either today or very early tomorrow will have their box sent out tomorrow. You guys heard it here, man. You got if you guys missed Inja Binja review on Instagram, go ahead and check it out. She went over copies box. There was a lot of freaking items. And I mean he, True to the spe- true to the fact she got nervous, but she did great, man. There were a lot of great books in there, so definitely support our man Copy over in the community. If you guys love comics and yep. true to the fact, I mean, I could say Copy is right. I've only seen Scott Snyder sign number one. You know, yeah. I, I, my comic book store had it, um, a signing there, but um, to have one and six and to have Copy, you know, uh, Copy, am I able to say that? Uh, about your comic book store and whatnot, or that he goes to your co- oh yeah, so he goes to freaking copies comic book store. So you know that's a once in a lifetime thing. That's yeah. like you'll never get that. Just true to the fact. So definitely hop on it if you guys are interested in in you know getting your uh, comic book collection a little spruce up. Pick up a box. And and Inja, I would be scared too. The fact the copy knows your address now. No, <laughs> never that. I mean, look at Amikaze, look at him. Brother? He's a little, he's a little Dahmer-esque. Dahmer-esque. I mean, you, you saw the way he was talking about Aunt May earlier. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, but you but you heard what Rob said though, right? Uh, Rob isn't the one who has her address. <laughs> what, what Rob are we talking? I don't about? have Aunt May's address. Come on. Yeah, he'll fill your box. That's for sure. All right, fill your box. <laughs> and, and also to just for everybody out in the chat. As an FYI, to Noctera um, Snyder and um, and Tony Daniel have already mentioned that it is it's been optioned. Yes, I mean, they're, yes. saying they're, yep. they're making this this uh, this book, this character into uh, into a TV show or a movie. So it's going to happen, and you get these things signed, you know, for yep. forty bucks. I mean, it's it's like nothing. Right? And yeah. this is just an exclusive here. There will be another box that will have 
uh, the Noctara Volume 1, which is 1 through 6, from Image Comics with the book plates signed by both Scott Snyder and Tony Daniel. So those were very, very, very limited. And I have one of those floating around in a box as well. Ooh, so nice. you have the wow. trade signed by both of them. That's great. Jump That's on it, guys. Good. Jump on it. With some hot boxes. All right. So Back, let me know, people. And then if you do a video or if you do, if anybody does decide to do a box, just let me know if you're going to go live on Instagram or YouTube or tag me in it, whatever it is. I'd love to see which one you get because I'm not going to listen. I don't know who's getting what. And I also have DC Marvel. I'm sorry, DC Walmart four packs. Some of them are randomly inserted into these. I have like 12 or 15 of them that are just randomly inserted in some of the boxes. So you might get that. Inja got one. Yeah. She was lucky Ooh. enough. Damn, copy. Ooh. Might have to chew up later tonight. Nice. Yo, go for it, man. What the hell? I'm not looking to make any money. I'm just looking to recoup all the money that I spent on this. That's why it's so cheap. Nice. You know, believe me, you spent money at King Kong. I can attest that. <laughs> yeah. I just got a lot of books. No, you did. You did. You know what some of the but, but, and but and some of those big more, books, though. man. Those are in the boxes. See, I, I still didn't get to see copy buy anything at the con, at Baltimore. Right. He was in <laughs> and out so fast. <laughs> no, copy was uh, fixing his phone at Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I bought a lot of stuff there too. Some of the stuff that I bought at Baltimore is going is in these boxes. A lot of this stuff. Bro. Oh. All right. Thanks a lot, Copy. Um, and yeah, you thank you. Put, uh, the DM in the uh, – or not the DM. But we also uh, put your uh, Instagram on in the live chat. It's also in the description, so make sure to hit him up and send him a DM if you want these boxes. Um, and then, Brandon, what do you have going on on, on your show? What's going on, y'all? So um, the other day, Saturday morning, I know this wasn't uh, sufficient for the West Coast people. I know you ought to catch on the replay. But I had an interview, or I didn't have to have the pleasure of interviewing J.M. Dimitrius, talking about Ben Riley Spider-Man. So uh, we talked a lot about Ben's history, especially because this story coming out in January is taking place in the 90s, similar to what Peter David is doing with Symbiote Spider-Man. I mean, it was just a really great conversation. Our goal was to um, address a lot of the misconceptions about Ben and get you attached to the character rather than spoiling what's going to happen in the book because it, it hasn't even come out yet. So we achieved that. We talked a little about Justice, Justice League International, which was in the chat earlier, uh, with who, which wherever the, the small Guy Gardner fans ugh, are. But um, that was a lot of fun. I'm sorry. I don't like Guy, but um, I liked him in that book. And yeah, then tomorrow, like tomorrow we yeah. have weekly wrap-up. Bryce will be out, but I will be joined by the Cerebros. And then Wednesday is Crisis on Infinite Rants. We'll be doing the top 10 MCUs, which is a challenge that – uh, Verno tagged me that's been floating around the community. And then we have the interview with that I actually dropped today. I announced that today with John Lease. And then we have archives coming out on Friday, which we will be doing King in Black. If you missed the joke of World One from Friday, I suggest going back, catching that on the rewind. Um, in the pipeline, everyone always asks about Creator's Corner. I can say we're booked now up until past March. Dude, awesome. Um, but I can I can say that Roy wow. Thomas will be on the show in January. That is so awesome. I'm really excited about that. And less than I, it's really cool to think about. I've been only interviewing for less than a year on YouTube. It'll be a year in, I believe April or May. But um, we'll be sitting down with one of the Ooh. icons, Roy Thomas, real soon. Didn't you just meet him, uh, Big Rob? Yeah, yesterday. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, at Torpedo Con, right? Yeah, no, Torpedo Comics in Orange County. I got my uh, Marvel Spotlight number five and Star Wars one and two signed and CGC. There you go. That's awesome. So I'm really excited about that. And De La Toro, what's going on, my brother? What's going on? For y'all who are not subbed up to Brando over there at Comics Kings, I definitely recommend it. Brandon has been doing some amazing things, man. Amazing interviews on that set with several artists, man. You already said it, guys. I mean, he already said it. He let the cat out the bag. He's going to be 
book to March. So I can only imagine who he's got coming in. So I'm super excited, Brando, for you. Thank Shout you, man. Thank you, man. Course, I really do appreciate all the support. It's great. We're about to hit 500 subs on YouTube. So I'm really excited for that as well. Bam. And then again, uh, definitely hit up uh, Brandon. His description, uh, his uh, IG as well as his YouTube channel are in the description. So make sure to click on it and sub him up. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of, of great stuff coming on, as you can tell. Appreciate you, Alonzo. Anytime, Brandon. All right. And as for us, uh, Steve, what do we got going on on Monday at 530? All right, man. So tomorrow, man, 530 Pacific Standard Time, 830 Pacific Eastern Standard Time. We will be at Fanime Talk with Eric the Phoenix with our special guest, Nicole, our girl, Nicole. They are going to be going over first impressions of Eden Zero and Kill LA, LA Kill. So Nicole recommended Eric watch an anime. And Eric did vice versa, so we're gonna go ahead and get their takes on some fanime talk. You know, you know, we got to get that segment in. So I am super excited to see what their take is. All right, and then we also have Geek Factor live. Uh, Jr., what is going on with this? Uh, we are in the semifinals round of Geek Factor. This is going to be hosted by our awesome mods. Um, I don't know who is playing this week. I think we're keeping that a mystery. Or are we not, Alonzo? Were you about to say something? We, we are. So uh, right now, uh, we're we're working on scheduling. So it could be anybody right now. Right now, um, I believe it is going to be the uh, Holy Moly Comic Shop versus Blockbuster <laughs> Boys, and then also the other semifinal round would be um, um, Hype Side of the Moon versus the Speculators. Uh, but we so, don't know yet who's going to be playing uh, this Tuesday, uh, as as schedules are right now in flux. So we've got that coming this Tuesday, which should be a fun one. We're going we got three more episodes of Geek Factor Live for the year. It should be very awesome, um, and uh, it's always a blast. Just come in and join. Look at us make some dumb answers to some questions that we should know the fucking answer to. I know you <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah. the years that we've been walking the earth and watching That's all right. this pop That's culture right. stuff, we better we better do some things. And, and plus, you find out some interesting facts, like Alonzo knows about Twilight fan fiction. There I mean, <laughs> that, wow. I, I still want a TV. I, I want to do an eps, a series. Alonzo <laughs> and his fan fiction love. Oh, uh, and. And, and speaking of that, uh, we have uh, our Mondo Mail Call on Thursday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mondo With Mail Call. Special guest, Bearded Comic Bro. Big Greg. So Greg he's going to be our special guest this Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we're uh, looking forward to that one. I mean, it's, it's going to be a great show, as always, where we highlight somebody from the community. Um, so um, make sure to, to, to catch us there. All right, and then we have LA Comic Con. So as you guys know, Jeff, Steve, and I, we're at LA, LA Comic Con on Friday and Saturday. Um, if you head over to our Team Nerd Herd um, Instagram page, we did a number of interviews. Um, we also uh, talked to some of the uh, folks out at uh, Loungefly and Hot Topic. Um, and... We also talked to a couple of other folks, too, that you guys should definitely uh, take a look at. Uh, oh, yeah. Just man. lost Alonzo there for a sec. No, I... Um, oh, you scratched his neck. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that we wanted to do for you guys, if, if you guys took a look at our videos, we had a number of items signed. So we wanted to give some of them away today. And again, we're just going to give just, just a few... Because you want to actually have some of the other ones that we can give out on uh, another show, maybe this Thursday. Uh, but again, uh, what we're going to oh, do brothers. right now is I am going to put you guys' names up here. Hopefully, uh, I got all of you. Uh, we go. got Ruby T, Comics Kings, Ninja Vinja, Copy 801, Something Wong, Glenn 2K12, Raging Cajun Comics. Uncanny Swag, No Good Comics, Lord Chucks, 
Jerome Fernandez, Ultra Maximus, Gorbidal, um, Brother Comics, Old Brother Comics, Tino73, Jose Crespo, Bearded Comic Bro, Chet, uh, Canadian Geek, Chet Scotland, Joseph Pantalone, Comic Ozzy, Dan Delatura, and Pure Gosu. Um, guys, let me know if you um, are there. Hopefully, you guys are. I just want to give you a quick preview. Did you put Jarrell you in there? Of what you guys are getting. So, um, we're going to be doing two of them tonight. The first is for, and I'm going to highlight myself real fast. Hey, Alonzo, did you put Jarrell in there? Um, I believe I did. Jarrell? I mean, let me just double check. Hold on. He is there. All right. Yep. He is there. He is there, sir. All right. Here we go. So um, this is what we're going to be giving away. So if you guys know, David Mack was at the show, but so we're going to give you the uh, Man, look novel at that. of cover, which is going to be an HBO Plus series, which hmm. Bendis and Mack um, are producing. So it's going to be great. I need and, that. Um, well, if I remember correctly, if you were hearing in the interview when you were talking to him, Mac is actually directing. Oh, there you go. Bam, look at that. And guy. Uh, David Mac did sign it. Alonzo, you got the money transfer I sent you, right? <laughs> oh, of course I did. Of course I did. Of course I did. All My right, man so Brandon needs to get that. He needs it. That's right. So this is the first comic we're going to be giving away. So here you go. Um, and let me uh, put this up. Let bait decide, guys. Good luck That's to right. everybody. So good luck to everybody. I'm in it, right? <laughs> it, 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 except for copy, everyone except for copy. No, I'm That's right. Um, if I win, see. spin again. Oh wow! Thanks a lot, copy. Look no, at give it to me. All right, here we go. I'll let fake decide. Here we go, guys. Good luck to everybody. I can't. I can't win. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? Oh! Oh! Something wrong by a, right, by well, a I will definitely hit you up on Instagram. So that cover, volume one, signed by David Mack, is yours. So we are going to remove his name. There we go. And then guess what? We are going to be doing another giveaway. Oh, what do we got, Alonzo? So, what do we got? Um, what we got here is uh, Killer Queens, signed by David Boer. Oh, very nice. And this very is the Jen nice. Bartel cover. And as you can tell, it's signed by David Brewer right over here. We're going to be giving this um, comic away today. So these are the only two we're going to give away on Thursday. We have a few more, but I will preview them to you right now. But let's uh, let's do a wrap for this real quick. <coughs> so good luck, everybody. Let fate decide. That's right. That's right. Here we go. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? Spin a Rooney. Oh, oh Brando. <laughs> ah, there he is. He's on mute. I don't know why. You're on mute, baby. Oh, I, I that wasn't it me. It's not, it's not, it's not rigged. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very successful purchase. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, giveaway. No, I'm just kidding. Spin it again. Spin it again. I don't you sure? Spin it again. Let it go to a member of the community who's here. And, and not here because they miss Steve and JR. All right, here we go. All we right, so I'm going to take right Brandon now. off the list. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. It's very nice of you, Brandon. Yes, Brandon. Very nice, you're the, Brandon. You're the best, brother. Oh, oh Rudy. It went to the most one of the most supportive people in the community. That is true. Yeah. yeah. That is right, true. brother Rudy, brother Rudy. All right. Um, and then quickly, just... For Thursday, um, we have a couple of other books that we're going to be um, also uh, doing a raffle for or a um, or, uh, doing a giveaway. So this is Kanto signed by David Boer, and oh, this wow. is a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. There you go. Right, right there. here. This is the Never Ending Movie Homage. Never Ending Story. Yeah. Never Thank Ending you, Story. Andrew. Thank you. Um, also, too, it's never we any have movie would be the, Kyle uh, movie. the Things from Another World <laughs> uh -huh. oh, wow. uh, by David Boer for Killer Queens. That's it. Chi Wong Fu cover. Yep. 
And then <laughs> last but not least, we have a David Nakayama. Oh. Signed. Uh, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Now, mm. screw. You're yeah. killing me here with that. Ooh, screw you, it, you mate. That's the one I that. want. No. <laughs> <laughs> right here, so, I will be back for that show, Brad. It's like, I'm going to be back for that show. That. I need that. Alonzo, uh, remember that money transfer. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. <laughs> Oh, no, no, that that has that has my name on the transfer, not not Brandon. Are, are you are you sure? I mean, we do have this other book, and if you see that, right oh here, dang! What is, what is that? Whose name is that? I thought his name was Comics and Pops. Oh, oh damn! Oh, is that damn. That, does it say Bitch Boy? Oh, what? Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> For Anthony, look at that. Check Dude, that thank out. You. Look so, uh, Anthony, this is going out to you because I know that you're a big fan. Uh, so we uh, had a, made an arrangement with uh, David Nakayama. So you're getting this book, dude. Thanks, I really appreciate that, man. That's awesome. That. Yeah, man. I know Anthony was talking about that earlier, man. He said he was jealous. Hell they yeah, not, he man. He wasn't on this end to me because him, Nakayama had he went to New York Comic Con and I wasn't able to go, you know. And you know, when I saw when I saw the video of you guys talking to him, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it was cool. It was cool. You know, I'm glad that you guys got a chance to meet him. But thank you, dude. Guys, you guys are too much. Seriously. It, 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 it's what we do. We know that you're a huge fan and we've heard about it. Um, we'll most definitely like do our best to try to make something happen. So, so there you go. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. I think we got Sunday top picks with the close, man. Thank you guys. Thank Copy801. Do not forget. Do not forget to get that box. If you guys are looking to get a box, reach out to my man, Rob. Best one in the community, man. All, all, this whole community is great, man. Rob is definitely a community member. That is one of them. And then also shout out to my man, Brando, man. Brando Comics Kings. Thank you for giving us your guys' time and being here, guys. We greatly appreciate you guys in the community and Sub up to everyone, man, because they are doing great things. This community is growing together. And uh, I think in this short span of a year, man, everybody is just putting a lot of great content out. And I love everybody in this community so much. Much love to all of you and you and you and you and you and you. And with that being said, big, oh, big, I was going to say big rock. With that being said, copy my brother Rob Brando, my brother Comics Kings. Do you want to take us out, Team Nerd Herd style? Sure. Are we all gonna say it at once? Let's you want to count to three first? One, <laughs> ah, fuck it. If you, if you want to do it right, collect what you like. There we go, Peace. Yeah. That's much love, y'all. Boom. See, we did their copy. That's too that was it.